Sen vatan oğun tuzuk işte. Ona ödürman adı fakta onu tuzukluğun zaçınar. Amerikan venture kapitalist gidi. Hürün qorulduk. Noyun Paul Bragil oradık bana. Paul Bragil. Amerikan ekstosin venture hürün qorulduk din sangin uuzgın bayağı olduk. Amerikan ekstosin zahurin hündin hürün qorulduk Paul Bragil nın Mongol olsad venture hürün qorulduk din sang sorcajilin tani ulaq hüvcülük zorluğar zorcilsin. Эдгээр зорилгын хүрээнд Монголын гарааны компаниудта уулзалт сургалт хийж Монголын хөрөнгө оруулагчд бизнесийн салбарын төлөөлөгчдтэй зөвлөгөө хийсэн. Пол Брэйгл нь цахиурын хүндэд ихэн үедээ яваа технологийн компанид хөрөнгө оруулалт хийдэг Брэйгл Brothers компани үүсгэн байгуулагч энтерпренёр хүн юм аа. Good evening. Good evening. Please tell us what brought you to Mongolia. Um, I'm here to explore, right? I mean, so um, I met a few really amazing entrepreneurs from Mongolia. They kept on telling me, please come to Mongolia, please come here. And uh, yeah, I couldn't resist. And so I'm here and uh, met some amazing people the last couple of days. And uh, yeah, that's what brought me here. Okay. Uh, how do you find so far your expectations and the, the reality? Um, so my expectations were that I would meet some young people. I heard the country's pretty young, and I knew I would meet some amazing entrepreneurs and some great business people. But I came here, and the energy is amazing. I mean, like the young people—not only they're young, but they're active. They're building stuff. They're super smart, and so uh, yeah, I would say it, is, it has exceeded my expectations. And so um, yeah, I'm really happy I've come, and I'm pretty positive I'll come back again. What very is soon. possibly uh, investment interest you may have in Mongolia? Um, so my job is to always look at really young companies, right? So usually under 20 employees, mm -hmm. they're just kind of getting going. And uh, I've made probably 50 to 60 of these companies in the last, uh, well, I guess, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I'm now exploring these uh, different companies and we'll do some follow-up meetings. And uh, yeah, so the investment interest is pretty high. I think I have one or two companies in the back of my head that actually I'm already kind of really leaning toward and let's see what happens. Yeah, uh, and uh, yet, you said during this couple of days you have met already 50 to 60 Yeah, companies. I mean, like, we've had a bunch of one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, we've had a bunch of kind of kind of group meetings. Um, I spoke at an event with, you know, three, four hundred kids yesterday. Well, kids, they're probably not that much younger than me. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it's been an onslaught of young entrepreneurs, but also meeting the kind of established business leaders, uh, meeting the government officials as well, too. So it's been a very kind of holistic view of the whole scene. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty kind of very action-packed but pretty exciting the last couple of days. For venture capitalist yep. investment, the scalability of business, the size of market, yep. possible increase in the right exit are yep. important parameters. Of course they are, How yes. do you see that for this small, uh, small country well, like Mongolia? I don't years? see it as a small country. I don't ah. invest in companies that are going to stay in Mongolia. If the company ah. says, I want to only be a Mongolian company, ah. I don't care. Uh -huh. Right? But what's really cool about the younger and upcoming generation, uh -huh. of course they want to launch in Mongolia, but they want to have global ambitions. Like, okay, Mongolia is our launch pad, but then we want to go to Southeast Asia, we want to go to China, we want to go to the United States. So that's what excites me is the companies are looking to become way more global. And from right? that perspective, yeah. you still find uh, companies. There are, I'm saying, so like, what's really awesome, like when you meet people are like under 25, under 30, they're bold. They uh -huh. don't care. They're like, okay, yeah, maybe our parents' generation wanted to become the king of Mongolia. No. They want to become the king of the world, right? And mostly this yeah. sort of uh, extension to global market yeah. will depend on uh, also on the technology, mostly IT, right? It's going to be, well, what I invest in is only technology related businesses, right? Okay. So if anything does not have any technology component, I don't touch uh -huh. it, right? So what's really cool about technology related comp companies is that they have that kind of scalability built in, right? You can put it in an app store, you can go out there, distribute it. And so distribution's quote unquote free of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what gets me excited. So I'm looking for, only those type of opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's go back to what makes you most excited out of many businesses you have created. Yeah, I mean, so my business was technology focused and it's using the latest up and coming when, when, when we talk about technology, what yeah. technology we talk about? I mean, everything's to be internet related. Right? Internet related, right. okay. So, IT. I mean, yes, exactly, IT stuff, right? So uh -huh. my career started when the internet started, right? Uh -huh. I was there the day it began, in the web browser began, right? Okay. And so I have to be part of that. Um, but yeah, what gets me excited, I mean, of course I'm looking for a big idea, I'm looking for a big market, but my business is still, at the end of the day, it's a people business, right? You meet somebody who's young and bright, and they have a very big vision, they put a really good team together, they put a nice prototype together, 
if I kind of fall in love with that person, that's how it works, right? And then from there, then we kind of go out there, dive deeper, figure out what the business is. But yeah, at the end of the day, I fall in love with the people, the entrepreneurs behind the companies. And that's kind of where the initial kind of start point is. Please tell us, yeah. uh, uh, tell us about your parents. I mean, yeah. how you decided to be a business and what was the first million dollars you made? Yeah, I mean, so um, my parents are immigrants from Poland. Uh -huh. um, They came out to the United States, didn't speak one word of English. Uh, my first language actually is Polish. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I grew up in an environment where they were super supportive, right? Uh -huh. um, they didn't get what I was doing half the time. They're like, what is this kid doing with his computer? He's playing video games all the time and he's in this corner. Um, but they were always supportive, right? And so um, my dream as a kid was to make video games. And so, um, yeah, I went to school. I went to one of the best universities in, in the country. And then right after I graduated, I didn't ever got a job. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make my own job. And so I was 21 years old, started my first company. And yeah, that's how I made my first million. Then I guess within a year and a half, two years. Mm, yeah, yeah, I okay. made my first million bucks. And then from there, it's been a roller coaster. I've okay. had some good years. I've had some really bad years too. Uh, but overall, it's been an, an upward trend, I guess you could say. Now, and now, how many all companies you t all together you created I started, and invested? I started three companies myself. Uh -huh. um, nowadays, as of this week, I think 247 companies I've invested into. And that grows by one or two companies every single week, pretty much. Wow, 247 companies you yeah. have invested to in this size of the companies from which I mean, to which? So the companies I invest in are always small. Um, like uh -huh. I said, we always get involved when it's less than 10 employees. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, we help them scale out there. Um, but yeah, some of these companies start out very small, uh -huh. but some of them very big. Um, Uh, my biggest investment a company called Uber, uh -huh. we put in there, they had five uh -huh. employees. Now it's worth $69 billion dollars and have thousands of employees. So they might start small, but yes. they potentially become really big. Yeah. How have you have heard first this Uber? Is it your idea? or No, it's not my idea. Definitely not. Um, but it's one of my friends, uh, uh -huh. the founder, CEO, Travis. Um, I met him five or six years before he started the company. He's a uh -huh. colleague. We would hang out. Uh -huh. We got to know each other on a personal level. Uh -huh. And when he started Uber, uh -huh. uh, he invited me to be involved in the company. I helped him hire some of the first early employees. And from there, the rest is history. And you are the one of the uh, founder and also a large shareholder? I'm not a founder. Once again, there's a founder, but I'm one of the early investors and okay. kind of advisors behind the company. I and see. yes, I'm definitely a decent sized shareholder. Yeah. yeah uh, No, and it's uh, Uber is a public company. So it is not public yet, actually. It's not a private yet, company. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. They've been holding off on becoming public because there's a lot of advantages by being private and kind of keeping it inside the house. But they will probably go public in the near future, I'm guessing. Okay. Uh, what is, say, is it necessarily exit for a company to be public or not? Um, no, not every company needs to go public, right? Mm -hmm. Some stay private. Um, there's also obviously a large private acquisition market. Mm -hmm. I mean, so a lot of companies actually find their exits by being acquired by another big company. Um, for most, the dream is to go public, but uh -huh. that doesn't necessarily mean you have to. Please tell us a little yeah. bit some parameters of Uber today. Yeah. How many countries, how many altogether. It's the largest taxi company which has no own taxi. Of course. Yeah. That's so. what's so cool about technology, right? Yes. Um, you can go out there and yeah, have a fleet of cars. Yes. You know, it's more of a platform to go out there and you know, call the cars, call the taxis, and be this ride-sharing platform. Um, I mean, I think they're in over 100 countries nowadays. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they're anywhere from like some random city in the middle of Africa to the largest cities in the United States. And they're scaling like crazy. They're launching a new city, I think, every week or two, and it keeps okay. on growing. Will it be in Mongolia? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not privy to the every single day launch, but I'm pretty uh -huh. sure part of their global plan will be to come here eventually. Okay. What are other interesting company that make, made you most excited? Most excited? Oh, I mean, like, there's tons of really cool companies I'm involved in, right? So I'm um, involved in a really amazing VR company, right? So they're building the next generation of video games okay. in the virtual reality heads. It's called Super Bright, um, uh -huh. a company based out of Poland. And they're building some of the most amazing, beautiful experiences. You go in there and you feel like you're in a different world. Um, I'm seeing other companies that are doing amazing things around food and agriculture technology, right? Mm. They go out there, they analyze all the data about milk production and actually make milk even more efficient to create, right? So you go out there with the cows, but you have all the data on what the cows are eating, what kind of antibiotics, how much they're sleeping, and increases cow milk production by 30, 40%, right? So it's a whole variety of things. And that's what's really cool. Technology nowadays is touching everything. Okay, so you are keep increasing now almost 250 companies yes. you invested. Yeah. I mean, can you follow all these companies? Um, it gets tough, right? So uh -huh. um, as we're growing as a you know, fund and I have different you know, investments underneath my umbrella, 
it's getting harder and harder, right? So luckily I have a great team, right? So I have offices, uh, five of the six, well, five of the seven, I don't count entirely together, five of the six continents around the world, we have offices, and we have teams of people helping me kind of manage all these investments, look for the new opportunities. I see every single deal, I say yes or no in the final step. How many but, people do work for you? Um, we have around 35 to 40 people nowadays, and it's growing uh -huh. as well too, so yeah. 35 to 40, all yeah. I in Illinois, in No, Chicago? no, no, I mean, so we have, I grew up in Illinois, our headquarters in San Francisco, we have people uh -huh. in Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Nairobi in Africa, uh -huh. Warsaw in Poland, Helsinki in Finland, uh -huh. uh, we also have people in Brazil, I mean, people everywhere, so like, we're going out there and they're looking for the best and brightest talent, and they're kind of going out there and sourcing deals for me, and then I go out there and execute on them. And then uh, you are investing, you are growing the company, yep. either then your exit is either public or sale, or what is, what, how does it work? Yeah, what that's really, the, 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 there's three things that happen. Yes. They become really huge, you get IPO, they get acquired in a trade sale from another large company, or they fail. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> binary, either you're awesome or it's zero. Yeah. Um, but that's my business, right? So it's so early, it's very, I guess, say, that's the very, uh, nature of the venture capital. Yes, venture capital is all, it's, it's Either you all or nothing. win or yeah. nothing. Exactly, yeah. it's all or nothing, right? And um, luckily we get some big wins that compensate for the losses. But yeah, we're definitely looking for the extreme cases. So in that, that's why yeah. it's not that easy to evaluate, to give any value, evaluate a company uh, uh, valuation, right? Yeah, of course. No, I mean like the price in some ways like, like this. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's ways we have methods and there's certain kind of, you know, patterns, but yeah, you could still get it very wrong. But luckily in our business, we get involved early, right? Mm. So the companies are still kind of young and we get a very good valuation, right? Mm -hmm. So if the company does really well, we'll have 10, 20, 100 X returns. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you might lose a few million dollar valuation in the beginning, mm -hmm. but in the end, the increase is so large, mm -hmm. it's kind of negligible. So luckily that's how it's built into our model. Yeah, th this is like a rule of game, kind of. Yes. Either you win, like a, it's, it's a roulette. Like yeah, I mean, in some ways you could say it's gambling, but it's not because I have inside information, right? Yes. When you're gambling, right? Yes. I know the founder, I know the technology. I'm an engineer myself, so I actually know how things work. I actually know the market as well too. So it's educated, kind of you could say gambling of sorts. So we have a huge advantage versus someone just rolling the do dice. You, do you value, I mean, how much are you worth today? Myself? Yes. Um, I do know, but I don't disclose that for sure. Okay. I mean, but uh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, uh, when you feel, I mean, now you, you are several hundreds, millions of dollars worth at least a person, then does it change your priority in life? Does it uh, make you a little bit feeling more freedom, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, so what money does is it saves you time, right? Um, and it gives you new interesting opportunities. But in general, I don't think I've changed that much. I'm still a happy-go-lucky guy. I still believe in people. I still want to invest in people. Um, so the core of a person, I don't think has changed. There's a saying, all money does is actually kind of multiply who you are. So if you're a friendly person, you become more friendly. If you're a complete sad, but pissed off person, you just become more sad and pissed off, the world sucks. So all money does is amplify who you are. Okay. Um, yeah, so money is just a tool and it helps you kind of go out there and yeah, you know, increase your connections and increase your resources and stuff like that. Tell us about your family. My family, um, well, like I said, I have amazing parents. Um, super supportive. I was just talking to my mom uh, about 30, 40 minutes ago, okay. saying, she's like, what are you doing in Mongolia? They never know where I'm at. They're like, okay. always surprised. And like I said, super supportive. I have two brothers that work with me. Um, and so my middle they, brother- They actually, work with you. Yes, yeah, so my middle brother, we started, every company I started with me, he's uh -huh. actually my partner in my investment fund. Uh -huh. And so, uh, yeah, we work together and everything. He's kind of like my so sounding board. Three right? sons. Yes, yes. And then my youngest brother, um, we work together on kind of more media related stuff. He's uh -huh. actually a well-known uh, travel and film producer in, in, in Los Angeles. And so mm -hmm. I support him on that type of things. But uh, yeah, we're all connected. We talk to each other all the time. And yeah, we're kind of connected forever. I Is guess, he in this uh, virtual reality world? Um, He's definitely exploring it. Um, he's not as active in it, but he definitely mm. has his fingers into it and he's been supporting some companies in that space as well too. So you became also Olympic sports. Yeah, yes, I Tell did. us about the story. Yeah, I mean, so 
as I mentioned, I had one dream to make video games. The uh -huh. other dream as a kid was to be an Olympian, right? Um, uh -huh. You watch the Olympics, you see people who are performing at their best and are representing their country. Um, yes. One thing that I really love is like the opening ceremonies. Everybody comes in there with their flag. Yes. It's one of the most beautiful things in the world. True. Like people of different colors, different races. People are all like moved. On exactly, that. and they all come together in peace and at the peak of their careers. Um, so yeah, as an eight, nine year old kid, I remember watching the Seoul Olympics and I was like, wow. I want to be part of that. Um, so then, yeah, <laughs> later in my career, I was 35 years old. You know, I said, you know what? How do I make this happen? Um, so I hadn't done sports for many years, but um, I started training. I uh, actually never skied in my life before. But what I, was the main sport you had been? I did cross country skiing. Ah, and so I, by the way, had never done that sport before until I had this idea. Ah. Um, I started training it. I found the best trainers in the world. Um, and the really amazing part is so I'm an American citizen, right? Um, I actually convinced the country of Colombia to make me a citizen of Colombia because it made my chances a little bit easier to go with the Olympics. And uh, yeah. Oh, Winter Olympics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They, they never had an Olympic team, right? So uh -huh. I'm the national champion. And uh, okay. yeah, so I started the Colombia ski team and then I had the chance to go. So cross country, 10 yeah. kilometers? Uh, 15 kilometers, yes. Why even 15? Yeah, what yeah, was 15. the your score, 15 kilometers? Um, well, usually I come near last. I'm not the best guy, but I'm still the but best of the worst, as I would say. So um, we have a timing system, right? So yes. you have this thing of fist points. So I was around 300 fist points. Right. Um, usually about 50 kilometers takes me 52 to 54 minutes to make that happen. 52. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm not to that level. I was running right. for 10 kilometers yeah, before yeah. when I was a student That's in Russia. awesome to hear. I'm happy yeah. to hear that. It's great. Cross country is something it's a beautiful sport. It's, it's a great sport because you're outside, you're in the beauty, yes. and you get to enjoy. It's kind of like hiking in the winter, but you're pushing your body as well too, right? Okay. And the people, the sport is such a friendly, welcoming sport. It's really well, great but people. You're also uh, unique because you could, you can afford to hire the best trainer, right? So surprisingly, it wasn't that expensive. I mean, of uh -huh. course, I, I do have the power and the financial resources, and also more person, I had the time to go out and do that. But um, it is not super cost prohibitive, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, definitely I had the financial From resources. From Finland, right? Yes, I lived in Finland and I had the, one of the best Finnish coaches to make You live yourself there in Finland, how long? Um, so when I, from beginning to start, I lived there almost a year. Almost uh, I lived year. above the Arctic Circle. Yes. I was way out a there. Above. Yeah, because I needed snow, right? Yes. And I needed to be on snow as long as possible, right? Yes. I, said, I never touched skis before I had this idea, right? And so from beginning to end, I'm like, okay, I have to be on skis every single day. So wow. from going never skiing, I would ski three to five hours every single day. And yeah, we needed snow. So I was there until the end of May. And then when the snow ended in Finland, I moved to Australia because, yes. and I was skiing there every single day, and then I moved back to Finland. I did most of my races there, and I have a huge following there. I have a lot of friends there. It's an amazing country, so. You are yeah. obviously a very disciplined person. That's the thing, like, so when I want something, yes. I'm maniacal about it, right? So in business, if I want something, I want to work with somebody, I want my company to succeed, I will just run through walls, right? Uh -huh. And actually, that's a quality I look for in other people, too. When I'm investing in companies, I'm looking for people that have that kind of same a little bit almost broken head, kind of crazy, but you have to be maniacal to be successful in this life. And so that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, uh, so now you are traveling a lot. Yes. I understand you are almost either sleeping or not sleeping or long sleeping <laughs> yeah. or not sleeping at all. I don't sleep much now because flying. I'm pursuing what I want to be. Yeah. Do, do you f how do you fly? Commercial or you have one? Both, right? It depends. In some countries, I'm running, you know, commercial somewhere at home. Maybe flying private. It depends on uh, um, what my resources, what my time constraint is, and stuff like uh, that. Um, I mean, commercial flights are pretty good. Hey, I can't complain. They're usually are okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, nowadays, then uh, it's good that uh, young men like you and also investing and booming in certain cases. Some countries, big business, uh, small businesses yeah. into bigger ones. Yeah. They will have a long-lasting impact if some Mongolian companies are lucky enough to yeah. have your investment because they will grow with you, you with your knowledge, etc. Yeah. And yet, uh, meanwhile, the world is becoming more not peaceful than less, right? That is unfortunate. And it's Europe. unfortunately, and then people, obviously you are traveling across countries, yeah. meet different across religious, different yeah. people. What can we do to make a little bit more peaceful, to find this Islam and yeah. Christian, this contradictions, yeah. conflicts, 
becoming less. Yeah, I mean, so what is cool about my world is that people don't look at religion, people don't look at color, people look at, are you building amazing stuff, right? And so you see some of the platforms that my friends have created, they actually allow people to communicate to each other more often, right? So I think it's just a matter of meeting people. Like when I go to a country, yeah, but be it Islamic country, be it Catholic country, be it Buddhist country, I show up and you know what? People are brilliant, people are smart, people have big hearts everywhere. That's it's the matter point, of, that's yeah. the point. So yet, how do you connect these people? How do you make them meet each yeah, other more often? Yet, the people are becoming more enemies. Yes. They are blasting themselves. Yep. You know, how can we make, how to stop? Yeah. I mean, from where? Obviously, the politicians are not uh, the best. No, I don't uh, think the politicians are the ones going to fix the problem. Yes. I think it will be people in the private sector, people that will actually go outside their you know, comfort zone, right? So mm -hmm. somebody like me, I feel myself, I'm kind of like an ambassador of mm -hmm. my world, right? So mm -hmm. when I show up there, I want to meet the people. I want them to touch me. I want them to know who I am. I want them to shake my hand and have a beer with me, right? Mm -hmm. And well, in some countries, they don't drink beer, but I want them to hang out with me. Um, and I think that's part of my job is to go out there and meet people so they understand that, hey, not everybody from the United States is a mean person or pure asshole capitalistic guy, right? And so I think, I could do a little piece, and I think your job as well too, you have a big audience, to keep on inviting different people and putting people together, right? And so, I don't think this problem is solved very easily, but I think the problem is just, you have to just chip away at it, invite new people into your life, and hopefully, over time, things get smoothed out. So, I think the world also goes in cycles, right? Sometimes people are very peaceful, sometimes people are more aggressive. Yeah, we're more, one of the more aggressive periods, but I think we kind of, you know, build our way out of that, and just by being more open and, yeah, connecting with each other more often. Yeah, you are exactly right. Yeah. It's a matter of meeting more, exactly. understanding more, listening to each other yeah. more, right? That's why I'm here, right? I mean, so I got invited here by some amazing entrepreneurs, right? And they kept on saying, please come to Mongolia. I'm like, yes, I want to come here and hopefully some of the meetings and hopefully we make some investments and yeah, maybe we could change the mindset, right? And then they will go to other countries too and kind of keep on spreading the word, right? So I'm not saying I'm going to fix the world overnight, but I think a lot of people like me, like you, we can do this together, right? And that's what's really amazing. Um, you said uh, about 50, 60 companies, 300 people, yep. Mongolians, then you have in mind certain couple companies yep. more interested. Please tell us, because you are the right person to tell the other Mongolian young entrepreneurs yep. where they could pay more attention. Yeah. I mean, so. In Mongolia, yeah. after you meet in so many Of course. Them. I mean, so Mongolia is a small country by population, but it's a large country by landmass, right? Uh -huh. um, but small can be beautiful, right? So uh -huh. I do a lot of work, for instance, in Singapore. I do a lot of work in Estonia. These countries are about the same size, if not smaller populations, yes. right? Um, the key thing is, Think global, right? Uh -huh. So yeah, Mongolia is where you're born, it's where you're raised, but don't let Mongolia limit you, right? Think global, go uh -huh. out there, jump on a plane, meet people. If not, then put your company out there, put it on the app store, put it on the internet. You have an opportunity to touch the world. That's what's so cool about technology. You put it out there, it could touch hundreds of millions of exactly. people if you do a good job. And so don't let <clears throat> the mindset of the country being small stop you. Think global. This is your home base, uh -huh. these are your people, but it's not going to stop you to become huge anywhere in the world. No, I keep saying to young yeah. people that we are landlocked, yes, mm -hmm. but not mind-locked, right? Yes, exactly. The internet world is This is so ocean, cool, right? <laughs> so I met some of the folks who actually brought the internet to the country, right? Uh -huh. And you're like, once that happened, mm -hmm. you're part of the global scene, right? It's not, the world is so amazing and so big, right? There's opportunities everywhere. So yeah, let's say you don't do well in Mongolia. It doesn't mean you can't do well in the United States or in Papua New Guinea or in Tanzania, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as you don't give up, I think every entrepreneur here has a chance to become big somewhere in the world. The key thing is having an attitude, not giving up, and yeah, getting good people around you. Think globally. Exactly, think very big. That's how it is. Well, that's exactly what kind of idea make people like you, and I hope many Mongolians will go in the same way. I hope so too. I hope we, we planted a few cool seeds and hopefully these seeds become huge trees and they produce lots of good fruit. And I think that's what's so cool about the young generation is that they don't feel limited. Like I meet the guy and girls at these events and they're like, they're not, they don't think Mongolia, they think, yeah, they think the world, right? So maybe my generation, maybe the generation older than me, they might've been constrained by, okay, we're Mongolia, we're China and Russia, oh my God. But the young people, they don't think that way. And that's what I love. And that's why I do my job because I want to support them. I want to help them and you know, take those next steps and really become, fulfill their potential, you would say. Good luck, Paul. Thank, Thank you, you man, I appreciate much. it. Thank you. Awesome, cool.
Хүнтөзөгчтэй өнөөдөр манай дефакт хүний төлгийн зочноор энэ венчер капиталист гэж ярьдаг. Энэ хөрөнгө оруулагч Пол Брагиел гэж хүн оролцоо. Тэгэхээр лаа.